What's going on everyone, Lolit here. In this video, we got seven uncommon dividend stocks in 2021. We got a mix of stocks with some heavy pairs up front in terms of dividend yield, as well as some stocks with some heavy, heavy growth rate where you're gonna be earning that cash flow down the line exponentially compared to your dividend yield today. Either way, you're gonna be making passive income, AKA income overall, cash flow, money, whatever you wanna call it, off of your investments into these dividend stocks. I've been involved in this world of DGI, AKA dividend growth investing for a few years now. And the point of this video is that over the years, as I've been learning about dividend investing, and then from there understanding what stocks potentially may be the most correct per dividend growth investing, I've also realized that, hey, some of these stocks may not fit my actual investing plan. So with that, today I wanted to share seven uncommon stocks AKA stocks that I've seen come along the ways that aren't as popular as your at and of the world or McDonald's of the world, or basically your kind of tried and true and tested Colgate Palmolives, Procter and Gamble's of the world. And so today I wanted to share seven of these names. And basically this video is not meant to be a deep dive stock dividend analysis, but rather to give you an idea, just like I was looking for ideas of what stocks could actually fit my dividend growth investing plan slash strategy slash portfolio overall. With that, dividends are indeed a source of passive income from the stock market, but on the channel, we also talk about other ways to make income as well as passive income, whether you're talking about the stock market, the cryptocurrency market, and in general, different ways and strategies through investing slash personal finance overall. If these type of videos make you super excited, like I'm super pumped right now, I'm not even joking, I'm really excited here. Basically, drop a like, subscribe. You know how it is for future content similar to this. With that, we'll get straight into it. All right, so starting us off, we got ticker symbol HBAN for Huntington Bank Shares Incorporated, which I like to call HBAN. So for HBAN, we got a dividend yield of 3.84%, with an annual payout being 60 cents, and the dividend's paid out quarterly, so 15 cents for every quarter. You got a payout ratio of 41.59%, which it's one of the metrics that I look forward to basically seeing that, okay, there's still room for that payout ratio to increase, AKA there's more room for a potential dividend to grow even further. And over the last five years, growth rate wise, got 18.2% year over year over the last five years in terms of dividend growth, and dividend growth has been there for 10 years. Next up, we got ticker symbol SNA for Snap-on Incorporated, not to be confused with the obvious Snap, AKA Snapchat. So looking at the summary over here, we got it closing at 248.14 for today. Dividend summary wise, you got a lower dividend yield up front, relatively speaking of 1.97%. But looking at that annual payout based on the actual share price, you got an annual payout of $4.92 and every quarter that's a buck 23. Payout ratio, again, similar to H-Band, you got 36.98%, AKA room for that dividend to potentially increase in the future. And over here, five year growth rate wise, you got 15.11%. So that's pretty phenomenal year over year and it's been growing it for 11 years. Looking at HBAN and SNA, what I'm really focusing on is the fact that their dividend has been growing year over year in terms of an actual growth rate, which is pretty phenomenal in my opinion, and relatively speaking to other dividend earning stocks, as well as a track record of how many years they've been actually growing that dividend in general. And overall the payout ratio as well, which basically is dictating that the dividend can increase overall. With that, the next two stocks, you've probably heard kind of the names in general, but I didn't really think about them as dividend stocks back in the day when I first heard about them. So here they are. We got ticker symbol NDAQ, AKA NASDAQ Incorporated. And this one, not to be confused with your QQQ ETF, but overall, basically, this is the company behind the NASDAQ. And so when you look into the details, their dividend, it's 1.34%, an annual payout of $2.16. And so it's paid out quarterly divided by four. You're looking at around 54 cents. Payout ratio wise, 31.5%, AKA opportunity for growth again, and 14.41%, five years growth rate year over year. And they've been growing their dividend for eight years. Looking at these metrics, it seems like a great play off the bat. The only thing is the last five years have definitely been one of those markets, AKA your bull market. So with more activity, more actual ways that NASDAQ in general makes its money through its stakeholders and through the folks that are interacting with the whole system, with the exchange, there's basically a lot more activity. And so this may change in the future, but at the same time, I look at NASDAQ kind of being here to stay, just given the way technology is improving over the years as it has been and as it will in my honest opinion, not financial advice, etc. From there, we got ticker symbol TXN, AKA your Texas Instruments Incorporated. 
So you know how it is, TI-84 back in the day. So it's a common name, but it's on this list because there's more than just that calculator business. Of course, there's a lot of semiconductor business and otherwise, but overall looking at the metrics, you got a dividend yield of 2.25% off the bat with a $4.08 annual payout and quarterly payout being $1.02 payout ratio 54.21% and a couple of the metrics that I really appreciate is your five-year growth rate being 21.75% with a dividend growth of 15 years streak. So, so far we were looking at some solid companies in my opinion and at the same time their dividend yields may not be stellar depending on what you're looking for aka if you're looking for those 6%, 8% plus dividends naturally these four stocks so far have not hit that mark but the next three we got on the list are definitely going to hit that point and so with that, we'll get straight into it again. So with that, we got ticker symbol NLY. This is one of my favorite stocks and actually my favorite dividend stock, and it stands for Annaly Capital Management Incorporated. They're involved in the MREED business, and I'll leave it at that just for you to do your own research because this stock in general, it's a REIT, a real estate investment trust. And so compared to the other four stocks, the taxation may be different on the actual income earned from this play. So just putting that out there. But 923 right over here, it's my birthday as well. And so that's where it closed today. And so your dividend yield is 9.47%. Annual payout of 88 cents, paid out quarterly, 22 cents each quarter. Payout ratio is pretty high. It's a REIT. So general principle of REITs is that 90% is supposed to be paid back to its shareholders. So payout ratio being 80.48% is not really alarming, but part of how it's structured. In terms of five-year growth rate, you got negative 6.01%, so obviously not the best. It doesn't look that great. And dividend growth-wise, it's zero years. But the reason I'm a big fan of this dividend is that basically, and the stock, is that if you look at the graph, it doesn't really move in the long term from its range. And so you're looking at this 9.47%, around 10%, if I may say it like this, and depending on your average cost, you basically can get a yield that's quite high if you buy the dips. And depending how you structure your whole portfolio as a whole, it could be that cash flow slash income play for you to buy and actually get into more long-term dividend stocks that may have opportunity for more growth, where basically today you're getting higher cash flow for you to choose what your next investments could be. So second to last over here, you got ticker symbol MMP for Magellan Midstream Partners. It's LP for Limited Partnership. And so it closed here at 49.14 for today. And dividend yield wise, you're looking at 8.51% with an annual payout of $4.11. And per quarter, it's a buck three cents. And payout ratio wise, 96.99%. So it's almost 100. Again, it's a limited partnership. And so it's structured differently, just like REITs are. And so when you're, you're talking about closed end funds or REITs, or for example, limited partnerships, there are other tax kind of consequences. So again, not a cpa slash financial advisor but just be known that the dividend yields are higher but at the same time it could affect how much you're really paying in taxes based on the cash flow you're getting from your investments and so to wrap it up with mmp you got five-year growth rate of 5.87 percent year over year for the last five years and dividend growth wise man it's been growing for 19 years at one more limited partnership we got epd enterprise products partners and so 2382 is where it closed here you got a dividend yield of 7.62%, annual payout of $1.80, so divided by four because it's paid out quarterly is 45 cents. You got a payout ratio similar to MMP, 81.80%. When I mean similar, basically not your 20, 30%, but it's in that 80% kind of 90% region. So over the last five years, you got 2.92% in terms of your actual growth rate year over year for EPD and dividend growth for 22 years. If you came this far, thanks for coming to the end. You know how it is. Peace.